right okay so uh we'll go for question number two because question number two a we can do it easily b we can do it easily and c and d okay i'll not ask you to write it down and i will also not write it down but what we'll do we'll brainstorm together and we'll uh, have some suggestions in our mind the answers then we'll compare it with the marking scheme then we'll compare it with the examiner report okay so the first okay. question but before the question we have to read the case so obviously we'll be reading the case the case is Indonesia's output is influenced by, by its factors of production. Obviously, this happens in every country. A production, a production possibility curve diagram can be used to show this relationship between the sources and output. India, Indonesia, sorry, does have extensive fishing waters, but does not actually catch many fishes. Many of its fishing farm, farms are small and they compete against much larger foreign firms. These larger foreign firms have been attracted into Indonesia's waters because of increasing demand for fish. The price elasticity of demand for different types of fish has changed in the last few years. Question number one. <clears throat> that is the first part. Yeah. Identify the two human factors of production. Yes. Answers for that. Quick. Uh, labor. Yes. And, and uh, uh, this enterprise. Yeah. Enterprise. Yes. Correct because we were asked about the human factors. So there are only two human factors, the entrepreneur or the enterprise. And the second one is labor. Correct. B, explain two economic concepts shown by a production possibility curve. Yes. Could you guess one at least? Uh, perhaps uh, oppor uh, like scarcity, I'd say. Yes. Another one is opportunity cost. Okay. okay? Correct. So these are the two concepts. Analyze why demand for a product may become more elastic over time. The biggest reason. Okay, you can give the suggestion first, then I'll tell you about things. Okay. Um, analyze why demand for product. Uh, okay. Okay, okay, I'll tell you, no problem at all. First, what we'll do, the first thing is the number of substitutes. Okay. Yeah. The number of substitutes, as with the passage of time, it grows. Whenever something new is introduced in the market, what is happening? Uh, more of the customers are inclined towards that particular company who is introducing that thing in the market. But with the passage of time, what happens? More of the companies, more of, more of the competitors are there in the market and they introduce the product. And what happens? The price elasticity of demand may become elastic. That's the main reason, the number of substitutes. Okay. Second could be the proportion of income. With the passage of time, you would have observed this thing that uh, the price of the goods and services increase. Okay. And when they increase, they increase the proportion they are taking from the income. So that's the second reason. Or we can say the third reason why they can become more price elastic is it could be, uh, it could not be an elastic good. Sorry, it could not be an addictive good. Okay. Maybe what would have happened is that there could be more of the uh, what we can say, uh, advertisement on those things, those products in order to leave that, in order to abandon that, that suppose I can talk about cigarettes, tobacco products. There are a lot of advertisements by the government that do not consume this, or maybe they are doing a lot of information awareness. So that's why I'm leaving that product in order to, uh, not consume it because it's harmful for the end. Last is discuss whether small firms can compete successfully against large firms. Again, uh, three points, which can be in the favor is that small firms are very easy to manage they have a track record of everything they can deal with the customers they know the preferences of the customers so these points can be over there could you tell yeah, the points uh, against of that sorry sir could you point tell the points in against of that that small firms cannot compete successfully the points for that oh uh, yeah uh perhaps like i've learned this in business studies where like large firms uh may be like better and well known mm -hmm. so it, uh, it like creates a like, brand loyalty that's the term uh, which we use so right. it brand loyalty basically means that it gains the trust of customers in that sort of, sort of way correct more of the point uh, perhaps like you know why perhaps small firms cannot compete successfully is because uh, large firms they benefit a lot from like economies of scale yes very good and then uh, the point uh, large, like you know, large firms can also buy uh, small firms as well. So, you know, 
that's one of the points i think yes correct and in the end what we'll do we'll, we'll write the <clears throat> answer by writing a recommendation let's see the market scheme now we have done question number two only this is a market scheme i've already opened it in my uh, in my laptop and okay. we'll see where we earn the marks because so far we are doing questions in a better manner but we don't know what is important and what is not important in the answer okay so let's see uh, what is important and where do we get the marks in the report so let's see this is the first time we are doing this one mark for the labor and one mark for the either you are writing enterprise or you are writing entrepreneur both words are correct got it okay explain two economic concepts shown by production possibility curve diagram one mark for each of the two concepts identified i have already told you that we get the half marks for identification and half marks we get for the explanation of that point i hope you are clear on this yes sir yeah it's two marks mm -hmm. or like point and explanation and two marks for the other so. and if you only list it down we'll get the half mark yeah. and uh, the, what what do we have we have everything uh, in this answer and many of the time unfortunately what we do we only list down the points yeah. and when we down the points so we don't get the marks okay? exactly. when that. and the explanation import, importance is very much in the answers maximum two marks for a list like approach like you have seen the listing down only reward the use of a diagram if the concepts are clearly shown and linked to an explanation many of the times i tell this in my classes and i've already told you in the in, in, in our classes too that a diagram without any explanation is of no use correct yes sir except limited resources as an alternative to scarcity and the explanation marks could be curve shows if more of one product is used less of another there is a limit the curve shows more than one production point cannot be selected economic growth is shifted to the right so these are all pointers you you could have written down any two points and you would have earned four marks total let's see the c part and here is why demand for a product may become more elastic over time let's see the guidance first maximum of three marks for a static approach demand is elastic when there are substitutes okay more substitutes may be available for the product as we discussed earlier due to more firms more competition more innovation improved versions which means people are more willing to switch to and from the product the product can be seen more of a luxury and less of a necessity it can also be true demand becomes more price sensitive the higher the price as the product becomes left less of as i told you the higher proportion of it again the product may become less habit forming additive products are price inelastic enough so again, I told you about the cigarettes and tobacco. If the government is giving the advertisement on TV, so what is happening? People are getting aware and they will try their level best to uh, abandon those products. It may yes. become easier to postpone purchasing the product. Yes, the product may take up a higher proportion of income. Yes, already explained. Demand will become more price sensitive as the price of complement rises as the two products combined becomes less affordable. Again, the same concept that if petrol prices are increasing, so less of the people will be encouraged to buy um, bikes, cars, okay? Because obviously the fuel which is uh, which which is to be used for the car is going at a higher price. So again, what you would have done, analyzed, you would have uh, shown the relation, the link. You can see that more substitutes may be available for the product because of which what will happen, the demand will become elastic because more variety means more easy for the customer to switch it switch between the products the last part d part let's see the guidance first a response may develop a mixture of relevant points to achieve up to five marks on either side out of the eight marks you will get five marks if you written for one side only do not credit references to just cause in relation to eos or dos Economy of scale and diseconomy of scale. One mark may be awarded for small firms and large firms are able to charge lower prices. They explain separately. Maximum two marks on each side of the discussion for a list-like approach. Up to five marks for why they might may, may provide a personal service, operate in a niche market, may be more in touch with customers, what we discussed in the class. May be subsidized by the government, which will reduce the production cost. May be operating in an industry where economies of scale are not significant. May be able to take advantage of external economies of scale. That's correct. Up to five marks for why they might not. Large firms may benefit from economies of scale, enjoy lower costs. 
large firms may take over small firms large firms may have more power, market power large firms may, may be better known brand loyalty as you said in the class large firms may have more finance which may enable them to purchase more efficient capital machinery technology spent more on advertisement okay so this is the end of question number two we have seen that we have discussed that now let's see what the marketing scheme what the examiner report is saying I share again. This is the examiner. Uh, this is the examiner report. These are for the MCQs. Uh, we have June 17 paper two, variant 22. This is 21. So let's come to the variant 22. So what the examiner is saying, he gives always gives a key message at the start. Then he does the general comment or general comment on the overall paper. And then he goes for the specific parts. So let's start from the key messages. There are a number of key messages from this examination. Candidates need to explain the points they make in their answers to the B, C, and D parts of the optional question in section B. A relatively high number of candidates stated points without explaining them. This happens a lot with a lot of students. Maybe we might be doing that in the in the answers. Okay. For example. Some wrote in their answers to question 3D that capital goods will increase output and higher output would increase exports. Higher output may result in more export, but just because more products are produced, it does not necessarily mean people and firms in other countries want to buy them. A reason should have been given as to why more exports may be sold. For example, if when output rises, income also increases in other countries, the ability of people in other countries to buy that country's exports will increase. Think carefully about what questions are asking for before they start to answer them. Avoid common mistakes such as between price elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply. They switch the terminology. The students, when they are writing for price elasticity of demand, they write the word price elasticity of supply by mistake. So we have to be careful for that. Label their answers carefully. This is particularly important when candidates answer questions, parts out of order. Stay focused on the actual question. Ask some candidates attempt to answer a different question to the one which has been asked possibly by not reading the question carefully and others lose focus on the main point of the question. Now the general comments. The number of candidates sitting the examination increase again this session as in previous session there was a full range of responses given. There were some excellent economics shown in some answers while some other answers were based on based more on general knowledge. The average performance of the first question was good. Many candidates interpreted the extract well and responded appropriately to the command words, including considering both sides of the argument question with one E and G. Question five was the most popular of the option questions, followed by question two, seven, four, six, and three. A small number of the candidates attempted all the optional questions. This is the biggest mistake in the paper because the time is again limited. If you go for answering everything, you will you will not get the marks more than 90. Okay. It is important that candidates are reminded to follow the instructions of the examinations as answering six as opposed to three option questions will reduce the chances of doing well. That is what I was saying. The marks for only three option questions are counted and it is not possible to explore the question in sufficient depth if twice the required number of questions is attempted. He's saying if you attempt more than the asked required questions, you will not be able to go into the depth of the questions. Okay, it is not possible because they have calculated the time in a very, uh, what we can say, kind of very uh, better manner, in the best manner possible. There was some evidence that a number of candidates did not think carefully enough before answering the A, B, and C parts of the option question in section. It is important that candidates do not rush their answers. There were some excellent and interesting answers to the D part, but there were also some answers which generalized so lacked sufficient economic context which means that there was not any specific jargons or technical terminologies used in that answer section b question 2a which we covered now the answers to d tended to be strong while in some cases more attention needed to be paid to the wording of the question in a b and c a part most candidates were able to identify labor as a human factor of production but a number incorrectly gave land or capital as the second human factor. Are you getting this Rahul? Yes, sir. I'm getting it. So they have given a comment after checking all the answer steps from the whole world. And that, that's why the examiner report is published every year after every variant. 
the strongest okay. answer b part the strongest answers explain how a production possibility curve showed the economic concepts identified the two most popular concepts explained were opportunity cost and economic growth some candidates made good use of diagrams in support of their explanations i tell every student of mine in economics that diagrams are the key to success if you make diagrams you explain well you will get good grades in economics c part the stronger and an strongest answers tended to explain why the substitutes may become more available over time how the product may become more of a luxury over time and how it might take up a larger proportion of income a number of candidates showed confusion over the meaning of price elasticity of demand by writing about the factors that may cause a change in demand don't you think this is a mistake sorry sir wait ah a yes a number of they 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 explained the change in demand rather than the change in price elasticity of demand yeah so this is the biggest mistake we they interpret misinterpreted the question some other candidates wrote about the factors that influence price elasticity of demand rather than specific the factors that may cause demand to become more elastic over time there were some strong discussions for d part there were some strong discussions about effort economies of scale this economy of scale government support provision of proper services there was some particularly impressive discussion on how large firms may make use of their market power to reduce competition from small firms some candidates however made statements that were not supported by explanation for example a, a number of candidates wrote that small firms have produced high quality products without explaining why this might be the case okay so this is the way the examiner is telling that we need to explain everything we assume in the examination okay yeah. when we are when we are explaining we assume that the other half story which is there in our mind the examiner will understand no you need to explain everything when the yes. paper is going to the exam okay have we done this question earlier uh like this type of question yes i've i've done d part i've like went through it many many times before okay that's all okay you uh, you want then you can uh, close the uh, recording part because uh, now onwards you will be solving the question because the recording will become more uh, in terms of size yeah okay